Okay, so thank you to the little gathering of the bigger team for joining today. Um, for those that can't be here, I totally understand and just you know, listen through this briefing and call us anytime to help get you organized. So what I want to do with this briefing is it's an open forum. So please literally just butt in and say, I don't understand that. Or what about this? What about that? So the aim of today is that we're going to run through your itinerary, your flights, health, money, equipment. So at the end of this meeting, you should know exactly where to be, what to pack and what you're going to be doing. OK, so starting off with your flights, I can't most of you have sent in your flights. I cannot tell you, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to arrive with your exit flight from Costa Rica. So everybody on screen today, can you just nod and promise me that you have your return flight books out of Costa Rica? Yes, lovely, thank you. The reason being is that you don't want to be the two girls that thought they could get away wrong. Well, they, whatever happened, they didn't have their flight. Their return flight was from Mexico. And they were going to book their Costa Rica, Mexico flight when they knew what their plans were. But immigration didn't like that. They were therefore locked in immigration for 48 hours and then deported to El Salvador. It is not something I would wish upon any of you. It was the most stressful four days of my entire life. So, um, so no one is allowed to get on that plane without proof of that flight. If you booked your British Airways flight that we recommended, then it is reroutable and redateable. And I know that 90% of you will not be coming home from straight for after the trip and that you will then add on a phase of independent traveling. Closer to the time, we will make you all, you know, the last week of departure, when we know what your plans are, we will make you leak VIPs. And I'm very happy to then make a call with you in country. I've been doing that with the Plastic Oceans team that are leaving um, this week. Talking about <clears throat> top tips for Guatemala, Mexico, or you don't need to go north. You can actually go south. So be open-minded. You could go Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru. So both routes are now wide open and the flights that you have booked are completely changeable. So go with a kind of flexible kind of, yeah, let's just see what happens, the friends you're going to make. And trust me, you will make friends. OK, so any questions on the flights? No, right. Um, sorry, I have a question. Yes. Um, my flight isn't with BA. I couldn't get that flight. Neither. I'm, my brother's not here. He's away at the minute. Um, but our flights are with American Airlines and we're flying to Miami and then through to San Jose. So it's no problem at all. Makes no difference. <laughs> makes no difference. Okay, you, arrive, you arrive on the same day, don't you? Um, yeah, sense. I'm just looking now. I think so. That's the lock, Liz. Liv is saying? They arrive on 24th of Feb at 9pm. Is that the day everyone arrives? Yeah. Alice, you're absolutely fine. You, okay. Whatever flight you arrive on, you will be picked up, providing we've got the details. And yeah. Liv is chasing you all, as you know, she's the, she's the, she's the rabid chaser. She's like a terrier on the admin is you will be picked up. So you come through, Alice, um, you'll come through the, the departures gate and you'll see a leap Jakera sign. And then you'll be taken to the Rosa of America for the first night. Okay. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Easy. Um, um, Millie, I was also going to ask, do we get dropped back at the airport at the end of the leap? Yes, like you do. Flight. Okay, awesome. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you're on the LEAP program, the beginning and the end, and you need taking back to the airport, the final day, final night, well, the day before your flight, you will be escorted, you will be taken back up to Santa Teresa, no, San Jose, back to the Rosa of America, which is the hotel you started in, uh, 
all your accommodation and food will be sorted there and they will take you to the airport the following day. Okay, so it's super easy. Alrighty, any other questions? Happy to move on. Right, your itinerary. Now, I'm gonna be right royal bullish when it comes to describing your itinerary. Just, this is an adventure, okay? Just highlighting, it's an adventure. It's not a holiday, okay? There are holiday aspects to it, where it's sun cream, surfing, yoga, and beaches, but it is um, a volunteering adventure and it's hot and very sweaty. So I'm just reminding you all what is in store. So there's 24 of you. You're all going to arrive on that day at some point. You're all going to be picked up, regardless of your flight, and taken to the Rose of America, which is our base in San Jose. Supper will be organized, so you don't have to worry about money at this stage of the game, okay? You will try and get some sleep, but you are six hours behind, so you are going to be really discombobulated. I'm warning you now. So try not to sleep on the airplane, okay? Really try and keep awake so that you are on your knees by the time you get there, so you literally pass out, okay? But you will be up at the crack of dawn the next day. There will be a briefing in the hotel where you meet everyone properly and the leaders and, you know, they will run through the itinerary with you before you head off for phase one, which is two hour journey away down to stay at the Finca in near Kipos, which is near just below and outside Manuel Antonio National Park, which is one of the great highlights of Costa Rica. So. Your first phase is exploring the national park and working with the community. And the community project's a wonderful story which we set up this time last year by our first adventure team that went out. And through the course of last year, we literally took this really run down, just deserted fishing community center. It was literally just falling apart and we've whipped it into shape. We now, every group helps sponsor a member of staff that keeps it alive. And it's for the local kids to come, learn English, play, draw. You think you may, you're gonna be doing it. Beading, face paints, you know, it's to keep the kids active while their parents are working hard out and about. But it's a really glorious, happy place. So, there's kid entertainment to be doing, and there's an aspect of refurb. So this is your first kind of roll up your sleeves and, you know, get, getting active. But it's a really happy phase because the kids just are so grateful. And there's football on the beach, you name it, it's all there. At the same time, one of, a few of these days will be exploring Manuel Antonio National Park trekking through, waterfall, jumping, that type of stuff. There is an opportunity to do the, um, uh, the zip wiring in, in Manuel Antonio, but kind of feedback is don't do it there, do it in Monteverde, okay? So A, it's more expensive there, but <clears throat> Monteverde, it's more dramatic. So don't go ugly early and do the zip wiring there because you'll want to do it in Monteverde. Um, Cost-wise at this phase, um, meals to, when you're on the move throughout this program, the kind of lunches, snacks are not included. And when you're in Kipos, all food is included apart from two meals out. And usually that's two suppers when everybody wants you know, to kind of escape the Finca, go down into Kipos town, have kind of sundowners watching the sun go down on the harbour front and have supper out. So you need to budget for that. Meals out, um, at this part, budget $20 a meal. Okay, so that's kind of extra costs in that part of the trip. Now on day one, in the original itinerary, on the way to Kipos was a crocodile safari. Now, I'm afraid to say the crocodile safari has had to stop 
because um, the government has closed it down. So that treat that was in part of the, the, um, your itinerary has now been moved to a waterfall trip at the end. So you're not losing out, but one of the guides, they were too reckless and nearly lost his arm. So the government's closed it down. The crocodiles are too big and it's too much of a, you know, of, of a liability. So sorry about, sorry about that. Okay, so keep us, any questions on this phase? Okay, that is your community phase. You will love that. Then you're moving to Samara Beach, which is the, this is when the group gets split into two. Okay, two groups of 12. So half of you, well, it doesn't matter. You will, all of you, regardless of which way round you're doing it, will experience time at Samara Beach, where you're staying in a wonderful hostel, beachside. Samara is one of those, it's, it's kind of boho cool, if you kind of visualize, lots of cafes, lots of kind of beachside restaurants, you know, that kind of hippie cool vibe, that's Samara Beach. You, you, you're living in a really sweet um, Costa Rican owned gentle hostel, um, literally five minutes from the beach in town. So it's all very easy. And you've got a few days there. You've got one, two, three, four days, a couple of the weekends. So it's just downtime. You can do whatever you want. But people here, there's a surfing lesson that's included and there's a yoga lesson included. Um, lovely yoga if you don't if you haven't done yoga before you will love it here it's part of kind of costa rican life yoga you'll 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 get to grip that tattoos too everybody seems to have a tattoo but please don't come back with one um so samara beach masses of extra things that you can do here that you might want to budget for rule of thumb everybody seems to go on this snorkeling trip where they go and see the um, to the islands and see amazing things, which cost thirty dollars. There's a sunset cruise, which is ten dollars. Some people want to do a paddy course, which is about four hundred fifty dollars. Um, you can have surfboards there, you know, or you can do absolutely diddly squat over your weekend and just relax, you know. But I'm just kind of putting it out there what there is to do when you're not hanging out at the beach, uh, you will be the very remote first turtle, um, the turtle sanctuary at ASVO. Now this is your Robinson Crusoe experience, okay? It is remote. You have to kind of trek in, do a river crossing to get there. The accommodation is so basic. This is where you'll be stringing up your mosquito net. There are no lights. This is where you're clicking on your head torch. And, you know, you're all hugger mugger there together, cooking food, doing the washing up, you know, it is, but everyone loves this phase because it's so special. It's kind of idyllic, remote, little kind of treasure island. So it's, you'll, you'll love it. The turtle activity, it, you're still in the season. So hopefully you will see some turtle activity but nothing with these turtles can be guaranteed, but you will be busy. Um, the main part is that they have a huge hatchery there and the hatcheries have to be turned over. So you will be you know, removing old nests, removing the sand out of that, collecting fresh sand from the beach, putting it into the nest. So there's lots of you know, shoveling to be done. You know? Let's not you know, make it, it's, let's be basic. It is shoveling, backbreaking work, um, but it is rewarding. And then there's a lot of artistic work to be done. You know, every group this year has decided that they're going to make it really kind of fun, vibrant place. There's lots of painting to be done to, you know, tell the locals about picking up the plastic, da, 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 da. So there's that aspect too. After this, you, any questions on Samara? All good? Okay, so that's your kind of beach turtle phase. Then you move to phase three, which is the cloud forest. Now this is an amazing, this is probably my favorite phase. The cloud forest, this is where you are actually gonna put your trousers on and a jumper. It's chilly up there. So you've gone from hot, sweaty Costa Rica to, oh, some of you would be thank 
God for that. This is brilliant. This is breezy. This is like a summer's day um, in England. So it is very temperate up there. It can rain. Clearly, it's the cloud forest. But it is one. It is exceptionally beautiful. And you'll you'll be doing a hanging bridges tour. You'll be doing a, this. Eric, who's our kind of man on the ground that lives there, is your guide there, and he takes you on this three hour hike. I know some people, you know, you either love it or hate it, but you're all going to do it because he's going to take you right into the depths of the cloud forest to see the wildlife, to see all the amazing plants that honestly is a once in a lifetime thing. So, yep, might be hot and sweaty, but it's going to be cool and sweaty. But it's it's it you you just got to do it. Meals out um, in in um, Monteverde is about eight to twelve dollars per meal. Oh, going back to Samara again, meals oh, suppers are not included in Samara and at Monteverde. All meals are included at Asbo, but not at the beach. But in these two places, probably budget ten dollars a meal. And at Samara, a lot of people at the hostel do their own cooking. And so you can budget down to $5. Um, but back to Monteverde, sorry, a little bit of a sidetrack there. Um, this is where, this is adventures, adventure capital of Costa Rica. Now, this is where people do the zip wire, um, do the zip wire, which costs about $50, $60, really worth doing really really worth doing it is exceptionally kind of uh scary but awesome and you know it's it's so high up and you go right on top of the canopy it's great please please i highly recommend that a lot of people are doing the bungee jump that's 85 dollars. i am asking you seriously why do you want to do a bungee jump um but you do apparently now, the insurance, if you've taken out the Campbell Irvine insurance, bungee jumping and all these activities are covered. If you've got some weird and wonderful home insurance which you're using, just check on the adventure activities what is included. If the bungee jump isn't and you really want to do it, we have a solution for you and you can just get a day, um, a day insurance through Sports Add-on Direct not sports direct as in the shop and um, I will send you that link but no one is to do the bungee jump without being insured okay unlike my son who did it and nearly gave me a heart attack but okay, there we go okay so that's Monteverde so that's the cloud forest you'll love that and then we end at Natua so this is the um, wildlife phase this is down and a really, really special, it's a government run NGO and it's got more wildlife than you can shake a stick at. But I'm warning you now team, this is your hard work phase, okay? There's no beating around the bush. There's no me telling you this is a walk in the park. This is your challenge, okay? Out of all of this, this is your main challenge. It is hot and it is steamy. And you do wake up at 5.30 in the morning because the animals are all awake and they're really noisy and they're really hungry and you'll be giving them their food. So this is this is um, everyone's phase. They're like, oh, my God, did we really do that? But on reflection, they look back and go, oh, my God, that was tough. But that was awesome. So at the end, you've got one, two, three, four, five days there. So it will be four days of back breaking work. I know, I'm painting such a lovely picture, aren't I? But it's fun. And then the last day, before you all move to Natua, you will be treated to a big waterfall day. Okay, picnic out, waterfall to celebrate your journey and everything that you've achieved. So it's only four days. But the accommodation is basic. Again, this is where you string up your, your, um, your mozzie nets, your head torches, the food is basic. We're talking government run. It's like ASVO. They're both government run NGOs. There's no frills in these places. You're going to get the frills in the Finca at Monteverde and Samara. But at ASVO and Natua, you're going to be eating rice and beans. But they are, they are the challenges. 
but they're the challenges people high five when it's over and go we really did that so you know it, it all ends well any questions sound good sound exciting okay it is it is that what i love about this itinerary is that there's a real pace to it you are you're never doing the same thing you know day in day out every day is clearly different every phase is different it's like a jigsaw a contrast of experiences from the beach to the jungle to, to Natur, which is in the depths, in the middle of the jungle, going up to the cloud forest. You know, it, it's just, you know, experiences which you can't access as a backpacker. And that is what is really thrilling about this particular, well, all our trips, but this in particular is just getting you really off the beaten track. It is a challenge, but with that challenge comes comes real feeling of um, um, what's the word? If you feel really proud of yourself at the end of it. Um, the guides that will, are with you are all young and gorgeous Costa Ricans. I'm not sure right now which one you are going to have one or two, and they guide you around. But and then in each phase, you meet the guides that live in those phases that you know, give you the real kind of intimate experience and, you know, how it is in that particular area. Okay, so that is your itinerary. Um, money, okay, not gonna, you know, Costa Rica, brace yourself, is an expensive country, okay? You must have heard that from friends that have been there last year, out there now. Out of all the Central American countries, this is the one that hurts. This is the Ibiza of Central America. So you have to kind of have that in your mind. Whenever you're at some, you know, Samara Beach, for example, or at Kipos, there's always the flash restaurants and there's always the normal restaurants or the local restaurants. So you'll be guided what your budgets are, be um, mindful to everybody else and everyone's budget of what, what you want to do and go from there. I recommend that you take out $100 cash that you just have on you as a, as a backup. You know, that's in your, in your wallet for, for a rainy day. When you're there on day one, you'll be taken to the ATMs to get the local currency out. Do not try and get the local currency out before you arrive because, you know, it's, it's a ridiculous hunt currency it's called colons and you get a million colons to the pounds so you don't want to get too much out at any one time otherwise you're literally walking around a wad of notes of, you know a say hi i know everybody takes the revolut card and the monzo card but there is talk at the moment that they are not working in costa rica so it is essential that you take out a debit card okay if your monzo or revolut works then that's a bonus but it is really hit and miss the Monzo and Revolut seem to work in Guatemala, Mexico, all the other countries, but for some reason in Costa Rica, it really is hit or miss. Um, budgeting, most people probably on the last trip said they spent about on average an extra 150 quid a week by the time they fiddled about with suppers, drinks, and you know, averaging out the um, extra activities. Equipment, everything on that kit list is there for a reason. So don't think, I can't be bothered to take that. You have got to take it. You have got to take your mozzie net, your head torch. You can't survive without those two things. And you, in the wildlife sanctuary at Natua, you need to wear long trousers, okay? So the thinnest long trousers that you've got, Girls, I'm thinking those those kind of harem style trousers, you know, that you get that are really loose. Boys, don't take jeans. They're way too heavy. Um, just thin, thin trousers. You know, what, whatever you can kind of think of, they've got to be long to protect, protect your legs. Um, it's one of the rules there. But um, just, yeah, 
cargoes, even they're too heavy. Whatever you've got, which is really, really thin. Okay. Shoes. Really? Yeah. Sorry. Just going back to the cash. Um, was that take a hundred American dollars? Yes. Just like bog standard dollars, and then get money out while you're there. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That you can't pay anything in the pounds of sterling. No, that's of no interest to them. You can pay for things in American dollars, but you get a better exchange rate if you do local currency. Okay. Anyone else on the money front? No, all good. Um, okay, equipment. So we're at long trousers, mosquito nets, head torch, water bottle. God damn it, don't forget the water bottle. Hat, do not forget a hat. Um, T-shirts, but also you want kind of going out gear for, for the evenings. You know, you do want, you know, a little kind of whatever you wear in the evenings. I don't know. A lot of people actually wear Birkenstocks. I've been snooping on the photos. Um, so the two strap Birkenstocks, boys and girls, that's a really good thing to take. A pair of sliders, really good for getting about. But a pair of trainers for the hikes, really, really important. And don't think that your trainers that you wear every evening to go out is going to do it because they will get wet and muddy so I would be taking a pair of grubby trainers, which have got a bit of a grippy sole um, for the hikes. And they're the type of thing that you won't be bringing home. So a knackered pair of, of trekking-ish style shoe, but not a walking boot, not a walking boot. They're way too heavy. Okay, any questions on the equipment? Sorry, me. I ask so many questions. I'll no, we all. like questions. Um, you fire away. Oh fuck! I just forgot. Oh, the snorkel online. Um, it says about snorkel and stuff. Do we have to take that ourselves? Weirdly, weirdly, I'm debating whether we take that off. It's it's it's. If you don't take it, hold on. It's telling me time's nearly running out. If you don't take it, you'll want it, and then you'll have to rent it. Right. But I understand it's an absolute bugger to, to carry around with you. Okay, so, but it's not something we'd have to take because no. we're definitely snorkeling. It's an no. optional extra. Optional extra. Right, okay. And I will put that in the kit list. It is an optional extra. But if at Samara Beach and you're one of those people that really loves snorkeling and being underwater all the time, then yes, take it. If, if really it's okay. not your bag, don't bother. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. When it comes to packing and equipment, we do not want to see any hard suitcases on wheels. Okay. No, you're not. You're leaving those at home. You are taking your D of E rucksack. No, you're not. But you're you a rucksack, a soft, squishy barrel bag. We don't care. A bag that can be thrown about, strapped onto the top of a minibus, um, chucked about. OK, and e e easy to kind of open and access things. OK, you don't ever have to carry it on your back, you know, apart from from the room to the bus. But the day pack is really, really important that you like it and it's comfortable. So if you're going to spend money, I would spend money on a day rucksack. You know, the North Face ones are really good. Twenty five litres. 20, 25 litres, but it's got padded shoulders because that's what you're going to have on your back when you're doing all these hikes. And there are so many hikes that are on offer, especially at Kipos, you know, at the phase one, there are these amazing sunrise, sunset hikes, hikes to go to the aeroplanes, you know, this, this use airplane, you know, it's, it's just something that you've really got to do to get into the real swing of things. So um, a day rucksack, really important um would a drawstring bag do or is that no tom that is not going to do a drawstring okay. bag what with thin little straps yeah no you're leaving that behind all right <laughs> that is a laundry basket no i'm i'm talking proper thick proper straps on your shoulders okay tom i'm going to be watching you and be looking out for the photos what you've got on your back 
but it's you know that is worth it especially guys if you are going independently traveling afterwards and you're thinking of going up to guatemala for example and maybe doing the volcano trek that is when you need a good day day pack okay no hard wheelie suitcases please that's a disaster okay anyone else peter any questions yeah what about uh, mobile phones um there, there was i think it, it, the charger was on the or the battery pack was on the on the list yes that but, is that's a really good about, thing do um, they need a sim card there or uh, okay so when it comes to mobile phones you there's wi-fi in all these places okay right. so um but i strongly recommend that you take a second phone a second backup burner phone just in case you lose it, drop it in the sea, smash it on a rock. It happens with every group. And there is no post to Costa Rica. Nothing can be sent. And um, you can't buy, you know, if you want to buy a new phone in Costa Rica, it's going to cost you near a thousand pounds. So take a backup phone. Okay. okay. But no, no local SIM cards or anything. You, you can get a local SIM card, but most people, on the program, don't bother because they okay. just rely on um, Wi-Fi and WhatsApp to communicate with home and each okay. other. Yeah, no, that's what we thought actually. Okay. Thanks for uh, clarifying. Okay. Yeah, can read. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So that was a good one. Phones. Nearly forgot about that. Um, anyone else? Any questions at this stage? Equipment. What to pack? We shove shoes, sunglasses. Don't forget sunglasses. Um, uh, those oh, yeah. belts are really. Oh, yeah, I've got really another good. one. Go, Alice. Um, it says Spanish dictionary slash phrase book. I mean, I'm personally not going to bring one because my brother speaks Spanish. So right. Uh, I, is not that like extra. a special thing? Yeah, That's is that another thing I can just not bring if I don't have one already? You could be okay. I'm gonna go yeah. into I'm gonna go into the kit list and I'm gonna put optional extras. Yeah, that's definitely do with, it, do with it what you may, but and yeah. essen essential items. Okay. I'm just looking at the kit list, that's why I'm looking down but at what they're when you're with the local communities, they really don't speak English. Yes, the guides do. Brilliant, they're completely bilingual. But the local communities um, and at, you know, at ASVO, uh, the, uh, the government run uh, ASVO and Natura, pigeon, pigeon English. Um, so any Spanish to get by to communicate is really, really useful. And so do they speak Mexican Spanish, not sp like European Spanish, I guess. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And they speak really, really fast. That okay. Um, the dry, the small dry bag, I'm guessing is like um is is that the one you roll over and Absolutely. clip? Correct. Okay. That's really useful, especially when you go out on these uh, on these, especially at Samara, if you will go on these boating extra tours, that's that's when it all goes pear-shaped with the phones. Right. Okay. And that's why they say a waterproof case, like the yeah. Ziploc thingies. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I suppose I could share a dry bag with my brother because it's not like I need to carry loads of stuff in it all the time. Correct. Okay. I think that's probably all my questions for now. Good. You're a lucky brother getting, having a sister to get him organized. But he's, to be fair, he's does, he's done everything else. Like I've, that's why I don't have a clue what flights I'm getting because he's booked them. I have no idea. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm only here because he can't be here at the minute. So I'm like, I'm going to write everything down in my notebook. Oh, <laughs> Alice, you're so there. organized. I hope, I hope you, everyone else has been taking notes. Um, okay. So guys, I think that is about it. Any other questions at all? Are you, ex so I, I know that I might have, um, you know, overemphasized the hard work of this of this trip and the hot sweatiness. And I, I, I just want to, you know, I just have to paint a picture that it it is an adventure. 
You know, it is a gritty adventure you're embarking on, but it's got, it's got, it's, it's just got so much to it that if you're finding one of the phases hard, you know, then you'll, and you think everyone has to take you walking, finding it a walk in a park. Other people find other phases hard. So this is where teamwork comes in and you're going to help each other. And, you know, you know, together you will run through those four phases and do an amazing high five when you're in the waterfalls at the end. Oh, hold on. For the itinerary. Sorry, you may have said that, but will they be vi visiting Santa Teresa at any point? No, you won't be visiting Santa Teresa. So um, you what happens is at the end, most of you will change your flights and not come home. And most of you will then go to Santa Teresa, which is, uh, you know, one of the highlights of Costa Rica, to book into a um, hostel there. So no, you don't go to Santa Teresa. Uh, for the itinerary, what are the dates of each place? I will send you that, um, my little Google, my um, Excel spreadsheet. I will send you that. But please bear in mind when I send it to you, nothing is fixed in stone and it, stuff can move a day here or a day there. Or indeed, flip phases could flip round depending on the needs and da 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 of the NGOs when you're out there. Okay. So I will send you that. Um, but I'm not going to send that till next week when everything is, you know, really confirmed. Okay, so goodbye from me. Call me at any stage and live and Zoe here to help you get organized and get you on that plane. But have a wonderful, wonderful trip. Goodbye all. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye, 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 bye.